Good morning. Happy Tuesday. I uh, hope uh, yesterday was a good day. Uh, yes, I should start by acknowledging that in the middle of the sermon last, or in the middle of my devotion yesterday, that painting fell down. I haven't put it back up, but uh, that's not a big deal. And I should also briefly acknowledge that I am 99% over COVID. It has a bit of a tail. I can't quite completely say 100%. Of course, I haven't been 100% since I was 25, So, um, but I digress. So we're in Hebrews uh, chapter 5, and um, most recently we were looking at the idea of the tensions, the mysteries of the Christian life. Uh, there's a Latin phrase used by theologians, um, non capex, or excuse me, infinity non, finitum non capex infinity. So the finite cannot comprehend the infinite. There are aspects of the Christian life, certainly aspects of God, that go beyond our ability, uh, at least at this point, to comprehend. So um, we talked about those tensions. Now I want to move forward. So about 15 years ago, there was an article in the Chicago Trib, and uh, it said, you are what you eat. And um, I sort of glanced at it, and it was on salad dressings, and it suggested that you can tell a lot about a person by the salad dressing they pick, and I thought, oh my goodness. But I happened to glance at the, um, the first paragraph, and it talked about ranch dressing. And it said ranch dressing is, um, if you use ranch, chances are you're a young married couple. And I thought, well, hmm, that's interesting, because I used to eat ranch dressing back when I was young, younger and we were a young married couple. And then I saw Italian and it said, um, adventurous and athletic younger women. And I thought, huh, because Sherry has Italian dressing and that's not a bad description of her. So I then went looking for blue cheese cause that's about nine out of 10 times that's what I would pick. And it said, uh, blue cheese chosen by middle-aged men who think they're witty. <laughs> and then it went on to say, they talk about sports, but they're more likely to read a book. Now, that was a little bit too close to home. Sort of like the last part of Hebrews chapter 5. Let me read it for you. This is the writer of Hebrews writing to these people. He'd been talking about these tensions and mysteries and there's a section here about the priesthood of Melchizedek and comparing it to the priesthood of Aaron and some other things that I didn't go into. But he then says, concerning him, um, this is Melchizedek, and he, he's going to come back to him in chapter 7. Concerning him, we have much to say, and it's hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need to, again for someone to teach you the elementary principles of the oracles of God. And, and you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is not accustomed to the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. So, um, ouch, this is, uh, this is a statement to say, basically, you know, you should be uh, a whole lot further along in your faith than you are. Uh, you guys are lightweight, you're pennyweight, you're dull. In 1 Corinthians 3, 1, the criticism that Paul has for the Corinthian Christians is that they are carnal. Here the criticism is not that they're carnal. That means sort of under their own power, not the power of the Holy Spirit. Here the criticism is not that they're carnal, but that they're immature. Uh, they need milk, the food of infants, not uh, solid food. Now, um, I just want to point out that growing in faith, growing in Christ-likeness, maturing, is not something that happens automatically. Um, we don't have to grow wise. We don't have to grow full of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithful, and self-control. Those are not, that's not the natural drift that we're on. That would be uncommon for that to happen. Um, you, you, you only have to grow old. You don't have to get better. And uh, we, don't, we don't fall into spiritual shape any more than we sort of accidentally fall into physical shape and wake up and go, wow, look at me, I'm, I lost weight and I, I feel good and I'm strong and I'm, you know, I'm, um, I got a low, low BMI. 
Um, no, those things don't happen by accident. You have to work at them. And it's true of our spiritual life. I remember hearing a sermon 10 years ago called How to Grow Something Other Than Old. And it suggested that, you know, look, we will get old, if, provided we, you know, we live, we'll be older tomorrow than we are today. Um, that's going to happen without us working at it. But getting better to become more like Christ means we're going to have to be uh, diligent. And part of that is to be a student of God's word and to not just major in the basics, but to push on past that. You ought to be leading small groups and you're not even in one. I mean, that's that is sort of part of the criticism I think we get from Paul. So not from Paul, from the writer of Hebrews, whoever that is. So be diligent to present yourself a workman approved unto God who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. Part of the way forward is more study of scripture, more study of God. Have a good day.